So we can interpret the log function graphically using something similar to the log transform that we've been seeing um, previously. We have a data set that looks like this, and that has the right shape to be a log function. Uh, the data are given here. And if we take the natural log of this x column, and we plot the data up as the natural log of x as a function of y, then we get this straight line. And the straight line uh, appearing as, uh, in a, when we plot y as a function of natural log of x, that's an indicator that we have a function that is indeed a, nat uh, a function of the, the natural log of x. So um, what we're doing, starting with this function, and we can separate that out using the product rule, and that equals this constant here times uh, or plus a times the uh, natural log of x. So this would just plot up as a straight line. The slope is equal to uh, a. Um, and we also want to be able to get b, and I'll show you how to do that in, in just a second. There's, a, there's actually a, a little bit of a different approach to getting b. Um, well, OK, so here's the, here's the strategy. Uh, I'm going to put a line through here. And that line is going to go through y equals 0 at some point, right about there in this case. OK, so I'm going to take that point along the x-axis, and I'm going to call that x sub 0. That's the value along x uh, axis where y equals 0. So in this case, it would be about, say, 1.7, something like that. Well. I know then that um, if I substitute in x equals x sub 0, that this equals 0. Well, the only way that that's going to happen is if a is equal to 0, which would give us a, a, a non-useful result, um, or if b times x 0 equals 1, because the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So for this to be true, what must happen is that b must equal 1 over x sub 0. Okay, so if I calculate x sub 0, I take 1 over that, and that gives me b. So that allows me now to determine a and b from the, this line. Um, I'm also showing here the uh, same plot where I've taken the um, base 10 log transform. And you can see that, again, we get a straight line. These numbers differ from these numbers by a factor of 2.3, just like we saw in the previous examples. OK, so let's go ahead and apply this and get some results. So for this particular example, we need to get the slope. So the slope is the change in y over the change in x. Now in this case, the change in y has units of kilograms. And so what I did was to pick these four increments along x, go up, and then determine what the span of uh, y is. And so when I did that, from there to there is uh, 0.34 kilograms. And that's over four log cycles, or that should be uh, it should actually be ln natural log cycles. So when you do that, this has units. The log cycles don't have units, so you get 0 0.085 kilograms per log cycle. Except the logs, the per log cycle, um, it doesn't have units, so we don't actually write that. Okay, so there's m. And that also equals a in the original equation. Now I extrapolate this down, and there's x sub 0. That's 1.75. And so in this case, remember, I've taken the natural log of the x values, and I'm plotting them here. So these are the natural log of x values. So the natural log of x sub 0 is that. 
So x sub 0 is going to equal e to the 1.75, which is 5.7. And this will have units of days, because my original x, uh, x data has units of days. OK? So what I said then over here was that b is equal to 1 over x0. So b equals 0 0.17, and the units are per day. Okay, so those are the two parameters in this logarithmic function. And I can check by taking this function and substituting in. And I first substituted in x equals 100, which is that value there. Put that in, crank through it, I get 0.24. So here, y is equal to 0.26, so pretty close. And I also use this value. Um, x equals 700, go through 0.41, and I get here that it's about 0.43. So um, it's also quite close. So that's close enough so that um, the values check out. So it's also important to understand how to analyze a log function when it's plotted on semi-log axis. In this case, the semi-log axis is along the x-axis and the data plot as a straight line. To see how this works, we start with our original function, where we're assuming now that the original function is the natural log of x, given here. And we recognize that this axis here is the base 10 log. So we need to use the identity to convert the natural log into a base 10 log. And the identity to remember is that the base 10 log equals the natural log divided by the natural log of the base of 10. And that equals natural log divided by 2.3. And so we put that in here, and it looks like I've changed the round off to 2.302, but that won't matter for our calculations here. Uh, so we can do the same uh, analysis that we did before. We, we split up this product, and we get this constant times uh, 2.3a, uh, the base 10 log of x. And this plots up as a straight line, where this is the slope, uh, m, and that corresponds to 2.302 times a. And what we're recognizing here is that we're plotting y uh, with respect to log the base 10 log of x. Okay, so to determine our parameters, we come up with what the slope is, and that is the slope is equal to 2.3a. We can see that by taking the equivalence of m, uh, we see that it corresponds to this grouping of terms here. So we can solve for a, and it's simply the slope divided by 2.3. We get the parameter b here by recognizing that um, where this function projects to equal 0, where y equals 0, uh, x has got to equal um, 1 over b. And it's the same argument we used before, where the base 10 log uh, is going to equal 0 when this product is equal to 1, and so where uh, the where y is equal to 0, we know that um, x sub 0 is going to be equal to 1 over b, um, or b is equal to 1 over x sub 0. OK, so here's how we uh, can try it out. Let's use this example. The slope is uh, 0.41, which is uh, that distance right there, divided by two log cycles. So like we've done before, we're ignoring these numbers and just taking that to be one log cycle, two log cycles. We get the slope equal to uh, this value, and then a is 0.2 divided by 2.3, or 0.2 times 0.4343, and we get uh, 0.9 kilograms for the term a. We determine x sub 0 uh, right here um, by reading it off of the axis. It's uh, 6 days. And so b is 1 over 6, uh, 1 over days, or about 0 0.17, uh, 
one, with units of one over day. So we substitute these in. Uh, we get this expression and uh, we try out the value of x equals 100 and we get that y is equal to 0.25 and as you recall from the previous slide um, that's quite close we can also try it at x equals 700 uh, this is also quite close so it checks out and we're um, we, we have some confirmation that we've done this correctly 